Hi, everybody. What is our topic, by the way? Zero, zero, four. Everybody know what the topic is? Mm. What's the topic? We're talking about 2020. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the new year. Part right, of the new year. Okay, cool. Thank Going you. Going into the Can you next tell year. Can you talk about local fairs? So I've actually been here a few times uh, to do classes and stuff, so I'm glad to be here. Um, so pretty much, I guess, uh, what Kelly wanted to talk about is talking about the new year marketing-wise. And just a little background on myself. I've been doing real estate for about 27 years. I actually, um, as Michael and, and uh, the wife, you know, I work by myself. Um, I typically sell by myself about 115, 118 homes a year. Last year, I did 119. Wow. I've got an amazing assistant. Um, that works probably more than I do, and she's been with me for 20 years. <coughs> People go, how does she tolerate you? I go, well, no, I can test that. But, but she's a workaholic, and it just you know, I've had um, how many guys are part of teams? I had teams before, and um, it just didn't work out. And part of it was because I'm kind of a control freak, and, and I work a lot of hours, and it just. You know, and actually one of them was a good friend, and he's somewhat of a good friend now, but it just, you know, it, it, it doesn't click, you just gotta make the move there. So I work kind of, my special area is North Central, and I've been doing that area, you guys know, oh, no, North Central's kind of between, right around the Biltmore area, so that's been my hood for about 27 years. When I first started off, um, I did not, you know, there's a bunch of really good agents that would sell in that area, I just was determined that I would be the, the top person there. It took a lot of time off. My background, actually, before that, I used to have a nightclub. Some of you guys ever heard of the Jockey Club nightclub? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. wow. Old <laughs> that, was so, that was good fun. Wow. Wow. I didn't know my sister. Uh -oh. You didn't go there? I slept once because I was too. You only went once. Now the lies are coming. True confessions. Who went there? Herb's underground. Now Herb is my dad. So you're oh my there. gosh. Yeah. yeah, well. yeah so actually, uh, just a little background. Is my dad actually had the? Um, my dad moved out here in '64. We're probably not even going to talk about the topic, but my dad moved out here in '64, and my brother and I lived in Atlanta. We come visit my dad out here, but he actually had a lady store at Park Central, which has now come revitalized, but. In the meantime, he went to France back in like 1970 with a buddy of his and saw the whole disco scene, came and opened up the very first discotheque in Phoenix <coughs> and right on Central and Indian School. And that one um, did well for a couple of years and then uh, you, you didn't miss anything. Like that. <laughs> and then after that, he decided also too, he was going to. Um, Build a private club, so a town and country shopping center. If you guys are familiar with that, yeah. they have now torn the club down. He opened up the very first, basically private discotheque. So we had uh, about 2,000 members there, and we sold that after about eight years. And really, what I tell people for me, the best thing that ever happened to me is owning uh, a nightclub because I tell people now if they don't work with me, they don't hire me. I'm going to tell their spouse what illegal stuff they do. Ah. Like, well, and they go, how about you? I go, I married my disc jockey. So, you know, you go like crap. But anyway, we sold that club, and then we opened up a second club at Central mm -hmm. Camelback. If you guys know where Sweet Tomatoes used to be, our club was before that. And we had that. But one year into that, as I had gotten totally burnt out, I, I started hating people. If you ever worked in bars and restaurants, it just sucks. And you get late hours, and we had our first kid. So, we, um, I got into real estate. Mark Moskowitz was the top agent in the Valley. Mark said, hey, you know everybody in the Valley. I'd love to be your mentor. And so I went to work with Mark. But that same club, we actually kept it open for about seven more years. And actually, the last eight months of the club, well, if you guys ever heard of the movie Waiting to Exhale, they had Whitney Houston. Houston. And right. So they actually were in the, uh, the yeah. club from us. And all the whole bar scenes were done in there. And, People that were extras, they were looked at with me, they did get kicked out, but it was kind of fun. But, so about, about Mark really got me into real estate, and I stayed with Mark for about five years as a, as a mentor. Um, and people go, that's a long time, but when I, and I'm gonna kind of give you some bits and pieces, and I really want you guys to kind of chime in, because I really don't want to talk for an hour, uh, I don't have to, but really the, um, the whole thing with Mark, which was great for me, is getting me out of real estate school, and I would tell any guys brand new, like the last, License in the last year or so. Um, so everything that you learn, forget about it because it won't do you any good. For Close you. both. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, okay. No, and I'm just telling you only because it's not. You got your license. It's just real experience being out there. 
but you're never going to get any questions about water rights and stuff. But you've got your <laughs> license, and but it's really surrounding yourself with good people. What's your beats about? Yeah, really. I don't even know. I still know what that is. Are you going to be the humor guy the whole time? <laughs> I don't know. There's always one every class. That's good. So, but really, what helped me with Mark is just being having a guy that was a strong person, had been in the business for a long time. And if any of you guys that are newer, I'd say that's to me is probably one of the biggest keys is surrounding yourself with somebody good. And, and some people say, like I, I see in, in our deal with our office, I've had people that have uh, just got the real estate license. They refuse to be part of a team. Their first sale was their grandparents. And they made a lot of money, and they never made another sale of that because they were lost. And it's just it's so easy to get lost because you just don't know what you're doing. So I'd say really getting a mentor. I stayed probably longer than most people. It was five years. But the, the good part with Mark is I would go on listing appointments for people that I knew. But because I was a nightclub slug, I didn't have the experience. Mark did. So that kind of helped get me the credibility. I We got the listing because I brought them in there, but we got it because Mark closed them. And that really was, was key. The problem with partnerships that happens over, over time, about the third year, I actually got the McCain's house uh, for Cindy and Senator John uh, McCain hired me. And he was like, why you, 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 I mean, never had anything to do with the house. And we sold it for like $3 million in, in 96, and I'm going, why am I getting, he never saw the house, he was bitching because I was mm -hmm. cutting my commission a little bit. I'm like, wait a minute, I did all the work, you're getting like 20 grand, and it just, that's when you realize yeah. it's kind of time to move on. That's, you know, it happens, uh, and, but again, I see a lot of partnerships that work together for a long, long time. With me, I just felt like it just, it was time to move on. So, again, Mark was great. I had another guy, Ronnie Gilbert, who was actually at our meeting yesterday. If you guys have never heard of Tina, Tambor from the Crawford Report. I actually had 375 people at my meeting yesterday. She's absolutely phenomenal. So go, she'll tell you about how the market is right now, and how it was, how it will be. And it really was pretty inspirational. We had a lot of people in there, but she is just probably one of the best people. And then you know, we have also Bill Gray Prerocky. But so the mentor thing was really good for me. I still have a mentor. He's now 85 years old, Ronnie Gilbert. And I'll tell you what's amazing is I will call him, and I know what the answer is, but he basically reinforces me that you're wrong, you have to do it this way, and you need that. I mean, I don't want somebody to tell me, you're right, you're right, you're right, and then you get a call from your broker, which I have many times, you're in trouble. You haven't missed anything, don't worry about it. We're, should I tell you about my nightclub? <laughs> but, uh, but you know, it's really, the, the mentor thing is, is really, really so important, and that's the, that's the thing. So I do a, um, a three-hour class, and you guys are welcome to it because we have people from all, every company. It's going to be actually on the uh, July, um, February 17th at our home smart corporate office. And again, we always, it's a three hour class at AMC Law and also marketing. So I kind of go over different marketing things that, that worked and didn't work. Um, so really, I think when, when I talk about the new year and Michael, and I think Blondie's heard me before, um, I really hate January 1st. And it's not because I'm not in the bar business anymore. Uh, I'm not hungover. Actually, my wife is sleeping, and I'm like, because what happens is my sales are at zero, and my sales are at zero, my volumes are zero, and it pisses me off that I'm. We got seven thousand agents at home store. <coughs> Bless you. I'm equal with everybody else, and that bothers me. So I would tell you, even part of that, in the last week of December, when everybody's doing vacations and going, you know, I'm not gonna do any advertising. I do extra advertising then. I know people got holiday cards and things going out, but I'm sending out postcards to let people know, because if they're not listing right in December, especially as Tina mentioned yesterday, there's only 12,000 homes in the market. We're at the lowest inventory we've ever had. And I'm predominantly a listing agent. I list about 100, and uh, Johnny's already got this before, so that's why he's coming late. So I, I, I typically list about 140 homes a year by myself, and I do go on listing appointments, and, but, the key now is everybody that thinks they're a real estate expert, the sellers, so you're always battling that. But I really feel like that last month in December, when people start to, to kind of slack off, I'm sending out double postcards. I'm really kind of trying to set up appointments, knowing that when January hits, I got some momentum going in versus stopping. And so literally, I'm, I'm going through all my old emails. And by the way, I, I'm AOL. Anybody else AOL here? <laughs> I'm proud of that. So, um, but I go through all my old emails, and I'm literally 
three o'clock in the morning, as these guys know I get up crazy hours, I'm emailing people saying, hey, we met you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, are you ready to list your house? And believe it or not, people did respond to me, uh, and other losers like me, on New Year's Day saying, hey, let's uh, appointment in, in, a, in a couple of days. So I really, uh, I'm fired up in January and kind of keep it, trying to go for the whole year, but you just, you can't slack off. And I think another thing besides, um, I would talk about mentoring is, is marking yourself. And that's something that I really talk about if you guys can make my class on, on the 17th. You've got to be consistent in marking. And one of the things that I, I see a lot of people do, they go, well, you know, you, you've been doing this for a long time. And I go, I spend about five, six thousand dollars a month, which I would never tell you guys to do that. But you got to do something. You got to do something to let people know whether you're with a religious group, a sports group. Um, I'm imagining not all you guys start off being a realtor right away, we all did something else. And people, your friends and peers need to know that. So how are they gonna know it if you don't advertise and, and, and market yourself? There's so different ways that, that I do, um, I do like post, uh, do magnets. And I actually do, um, I, how many guys are hockey fans? So uh, I'm sorry, I hate hockey, but I, that's not, I'm not <laughs> But I grew up in the South, and again, we didn't have really have a lot. Our hockey team uh, went to Calgary, and I think Atlanta's the best at the Raptors now, so I'm not knocking hockey, but I just don't understand the sport. But So I do Dimebacks, Cardinals, and Suns, and the fortunate thing is they're, they're, they're cool magnets. The bad thing is the teams have sucked the last few years, so I was buying like 2,000 magnets, and now I'm down like 500. Well, what it does do, I, I would, when I first started off, I did a newsletter that I would, you make sure in the newsletter that it's actually mailed out to the people's address, not just occupant, so that kind of meant a lot. And I would just, when I first started, I'd say, here's what I'm doing. Not that I really gave a shit to what I was doing, but I wanted them to know, hey, I'm working with Mark Moskowitz, I'm a realtor now, um, blah, blah, blah. And you'd be surprised, but you gotta do it every month. You gotta do it, and when you stop, that's where somebody like me was advertising, 12 months out of the year is going to have an edge over somebody that just does it every two or three months where they get a paycheck. So you've got to budget yourself X amount of dollars and say, okay, I'm going to spend $500 a month or whatever it may be. If you don't, you're going to lose that momentum. So the my newsletter actually worked pretty good. I would do it. And then when people would say, please stop sending me your newsletter, I would send them four or five just to piss them off. <laughs> but it gets your name out there and it lets people know, here's what I'm doing, here's what my kids are doing. They probably don't care, but it's just a matter of, I'm working with this, and it just at the end of the day, you hope that they will hire you. And the other thing I did a lot of, is I coached uh, my kids in um, all through all different sports, because I, I, I played college baseball, actually I played Arizona State my freshman year, and then I ended up going to Coastal Carolina, which is in uh, Myrtle Beach, we actually won the baseball championship a couple years ago. But playing uh, collegiate sports, kind of, you know, I just, it gives me an attitude that, that I hated to lose. But more importantly, I, I told my kids, because my parents divorced, I'm coaching you in, in all sports. So I met uh, a lot of kids from that. The good news is that, fortunately, people that have hired me, I let their kids play. They weren't the worst players on the team. So, um, but you'd be amazed sometimes that it comes back to you, plus you four or five years, 10 years later, where you coach these kids and all of a sudden the parents remember you gave up your free time and it may not happen right away, but doing that, they, they just remember. So just things like that. Uh, but the newsletter helped. I always included a magnet in there. Um, even today, if I go in people's houses with my magnets and I see another realtor's magnet in the refrigerator, I take it off. I'm just kidding. I actually had, my, I had a broker in the other day in my last class. I said, I'm just kidding. But the magnets are just great advertising. I also put them in various stores around the area because I'll advertise. I do an article in our local paper, um, North Central paper, and I'll, I'll do an article on the different stores that I um, work with, and they allow me to put my magnets in, like in, in the stores, and then I talk about the stores. So just kind of cross-marketing. But these, and these are really inexpensive. I use Magnolite. I think they're like 50 cents or 60 cents a piece. And again, I used to do 2,000, but the team started being as bad as they are. Uh, I cut down on that, but it does, it does work out. It really does. Um, uh, again, here's another thing too, um, in, in this, in our local paper, what I started doing about, I have obnoxious uh, two pages in here. 
That picture is probably about 10 years old, but I looked better 10 years ago, so I figured I'd keep it in there. But I also do an article. And it, what really, I think, um, was a good thing for me here. So I do like an, like an advertorial article, which is so far a full page. And I talk about the area. Because my, I didn't really grow up in Phoenix. I knew you guys were different areas of town. But I talked about, I remember when I used to come visit my dad. Um, here's different areas, different restaurants we used to go to, blah, 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 and, and throw different names in there. And you'd be surprised sometimes people go, hey, I saw your article, I either knew your dad, I remember that restaurant. Just something that says about the area. Now, sometimes I do get people, the neighbors, they get upset because I talk about how positive it is all the, the redevelopment. I mean, I know the people that, whatever, whatever part of town you're in, the older people hate seeing, like in our area, we have a lot of horse properties that are now starting to get torn down and you're getting new and new, uh, more homes being built. And again, the, I get the neighbors that are there for a long time don't like seeing that, but as soon as they pass away, I hate to say it, the next day their kids are gonna be selling their properties. And having those new homes or getting younger people in our area, it's changing the whole uh, look of the area, it's, no matter what part of town you're in. And that's something that I think is, you know, the, the developers will pay more money. And if you're a seller, it's funny because when I deal with these sellers, they go, why don't I sell a developer? And I go, okay, so here's what you, the buyer will pay you. Here's where the developer will pay you. Okay, I'll sell a developer. And that's what <laughs> they're seeing it. You know, they don't want to sell developers until they actually become a, a seller. Mm -hmm. So you do what you got to do, but I think that helps. But writing an article, um, to me, really does hit people. People say, I read your article now. My wife used to be with Raising Arizona Kids Magazine. I don't know if you guys remember that magazine or not. And when I wrote my article, uh, I started doing it like 10 years ago. I talk like I'm from the South, and Andy of Mayberry is my favorite show. My wife would say, let me see the article first, let me send it to the editor, and I'll get it back to you. And 99% of the time, the whole article will be redlined because I talk like an idiot. And I go, I'm not, I quit. So I quit giving my wife the article, and I just continue writing in there because that's who I am. But it does, the article does really have an impact in, in the areas you live in, and something different than not everybody does. And you really want to have some uniqueness to it that not everybody's doing that. So that also helps. Um, let, me, let me look at here a couple things that I have in my classes. Bobby, would you say that that authenticity pays off? Yeah. So when people actually meet you, they're like, oh, that's the guy that wrote the article. It really, it really feels like. I, I do, John. Yeah, I, I do think, because everybody does the same stuff. You know, if you look in, mm -hmm. welcome back. Did you run your errand? I did. All right. Thanks. Did you know I had a nightclub 20 years ago? <laughs> 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 That's what I was just going to say. Everyone has okay. been excited about not the tennis, you know that word. I'm a teacher, I'm off from work, and I'm a professor. So I don't oh, I'm going to be careful about what I say. Yeah, okay. So, yes, everybody right. remember you because of the Jockey Club and Herb Underground. Not that big. <laughs> <They're right. laughs> but you got to realize a lot of people were born back in Herb's Underground 1970 either. Yeah, so. So. I was yes. just, yeah. But thank you for the point there. Um, but yeah, being unique really stands out because everybody can do the same. Everybody can do the same thing in their advertising. I think the article helps. Um, here's one other thing. Uh, let me see a couple other things I have in from marketing wise. Because then I'll talk about. Uh, again, this is part of the class I do. So, as I said, you can see. So here's some of the other things I do. Um, here, let me tell you about the internet deal. So. Um, I do a lot of divorce work. Fortunately, I have not been ever been divorced, nor do I ever want to be divorced. But I do. The courts hire me as a special master. If you got anybody ever done that for, or mm -hmm. for uh, divorces? <clears throat> so with the divorces, they because everybody knows a realtor and husband and wife. Of course, you can't say husband and wife in today's world because it's just spouses. And basically, you know, they they hate each other. They don't trust each other. So they hire a third party. The courts hire me. The attorneys hire me. And if one party, and it always happens, is gonna fight with you, I get to sign for them. So it's really kind of, and really, the more they hate me, the more it fires me up. Because I like it when they hate me, because I'm doing my job. But it's, it's kind of tricky, because you have to be fair to, for the attorneys to keep hiring you, and the courts to keep hiring you. But you got a pretty, you know, a lot of you know, just a tough, tough situation there. But we had one deal with, with this divorce, that it was a big, I would say it's like about $2 million sale. And the um, husband, and I don't care who was right or wrong in the deal, I just, my job's to sell. Well, and both attorneys knew real well. So the wife lived in the house with her two kids, and basically she refused to sign anything. So I ended up signing for her. And at the end of the day, everybody, the attorneys were happy, and the judge approved the sale. 
So how she got revenge on me is she put it on the internet that I'm a total a-hole, which most of you guys know I already am, but I said I'm an a-hole, I threw her kids out in the street, I threw her out in the street, and I, at the time I had a profile on Zillow. I know this is like six, seven years ago. Any guys have profiles on the internet now? So just know you're fair game when you have a profile. So I called Zillow, actually I didn't call Zillow because I don't know how to do that, I had my assistant Kathy do that, and say look, you know, I, this was kind of a unique deal, and what can we do here? And Zillow didn't give a shit. They, their, their comment was, well, we can't take it off. You just gotta find 18, 19 people to say good things about you, which it ain't gonna happen. But the most important thing, is, here's how I compare it to, if you have, and really, you're fair game when you have a profile. Your competitors could, could write some about you. Um, but in this particular case, it was a, just a, a pissed off spouse. Hang on a second. So what happened was, I, my, my comment is, since they wouldn't allow me, you know, I, I end up taking my profile off, but it's kind of like you go to a restaurant. If you look at restaurant reviews and you see 19 say, you know, it's the best meal I ever had, and once they got food poison, guess what? So you got to be real careful. Somebody could ding you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> you said you do a lot of divorce work with the court tire. How did you get on a list of yeah, as a real it's full now. You know, um, so I actually sold a house for a family court attorney years ago. And he just said, hey, did you know there's a, a list in, in uh, Maricopa County courts that you could sign up for? I think they're pretty full now. Yeah, they're full. So, so he, he's the one who got me to do that. And so you've been on that list? I've been on this probably for about 20 years, yeah. So oh, wow. it's, um, and, but they don't, they don't do it because the judges before were a lot more aggressive. They'd say, if I said, look, I, I, you know, especially you guys know, if you get an offer, you got to present it the next day and, and the spouses wouldn't sign off on it, I would then contact the court and they would do an emergency hearing. The judges now go, we, our, our slates are full two weeks ago, we we're going to lose a the deal. They don't care. So it's not as fun as it was because you can't wait two weeks. And so I'm not as excited about it as I was before because usually I could just send a letter in and, and get the hearing right away. So but that's just know when you have a profile, you're fair game with, with, the, with the internet stuff. So here's some other things that I, that I, I market. Um, uh, I would say, uh, we're talking about postcards. So I'm a true, true believer um, in postcards. And I do like oversized postcards. And what I do is, um, I, well, I'm, I'm real cautious about not categorizing myself as a realtor. And I would, meaning a specialist. Um, I know some people say, I'm a luxury agent, I'm a condo. I would give you guys my advice to you do, as long, do not categorize and pigeonhole yourself in that. Um, now some of the people like Robert Joffe, he's a good buddy of mine, it's Arcadia, their pieces of crap homes are a million and a half. So they're luxury agents if you want to call it that way. But when you call yourself a luxury agent, I know somebody called me the other day just joined Home Smart and her comments, I want to meet with you because I just got my license, I want to be a luxury specialist. <laughs> I go, you kind of pay your dues. It just doesn't happen like that. So. Um, I, I would say, we're, we're, so what I tend to do, I just say I'm an agent. Like last year, I was fortunate enough, I did sell 118 homes and 18 over a million, but I also sold a bunch of them, 100,000, 200,000. You know, I, I have a 30 year old kid and a 20, they don't care what I sell. They just want money all the time. So, um, <laughs> I, mean, I tell you about postcards, um, and I'm, my wife, you know, kind of a little bit too, but anyway, um, but I want to sell sex. So, I, I, do, I do two different postcards pretty much every month. One is I'm going to go for the homes that are under 500,000, and by by guessing of that, I'm going to say homes maybe that are under 2,500 or less. I always pick the same zip code, east, west, north, south, and I'll show four or five homes that fit in that category of price range that I've sold in. That goes out the first part of the month, and then the second part of the month, I'll go out to the luxury market. I'll show four or five homes I've sold over a million, and again go for the homes that are over you know maybe 3,000, 4,000 square feet. And again, I'll, I'll, but I'm consistent. I do like every, probably every other month, I'll send the postcards out. And the cards are not that expensive. I have the title company, mortgage companies will, will help you do that. Uh, I use Mags Mail, M A G S M A I L. And why I, I give you their name? Because postage is a huge savings. If you do bulk, I don't even know what's a what's a postage stamp called. It says forever. I don't know what the hell forever. Fifty five. Fifty five. Huh? It's like it's like fifty five. Okay. So if you do bulk mail, it's like thirty two cents. So you can do a lot more cards. You don't have to do. I do like fifteen hundred of each. You guys don't need to do that much. But I'm telling you, consistent wise, it doesn't always pay off the first time you do it. But consistently, over and over and over again, you'd be surprised. Um, 
that works. Sir. So, yes, ma'am. What about for brand new agents that don't have anything that they can put on the cart that they've sold or done anything? That's a great question. So I would say um, maybe you can ask somebody in your company if you can <coughs> use their their images of their houses. I mean, right before I first started, I would do that and say, because I, I have agents all the time will call me, even for your, uh, my home grower, say, can I use your home as a market? I don't care. Go for it. Oh, okay. Just don't say anything bad about it. I would ask you, are know, agents doing that? Um, or again, even if you don't have the houses, maybe if you're you know, part of, I don't want to say a cult, but if you're part of like, uh, you know, <laughs> some kind of group, if your kids play sports or, you know, uh, your church or it's something like, like that. Group. Part of a running group. So. Yeah. A running group? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. So, so, so like that. Okay. 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 Um, yeah, just the, the so anything and just bombard them. I mean, they know what you're doing. I mean, I was so yes, ma'am. Oh my God, not you again. <laughs> you know where this is going to go. Yeah. This this goes back years, guys. <laughs> she was, uh, go ahead, Ron. It's my first question. Yeah. Oh, no. Um, when you first started sending out yeah. postcards, I mean, did you have like maybe a smaller farm that you were hitting, or did were you just blanketing? So the question about, you guys heard that about having a special farm area, I pretty much always have used the same farm area. Even when I wasn't, somebody else was selling more in Maine North Central, I always pick out East, West, North. I, I kind of sometimes expand a little bit, like towards the Biltmore a little bit. But um, yeah, I, I've always been pretty consistent. Because I feel like if you're consistent, they'll keep seeing your deal. So it's not, you know, it's a- But I mean, did your farm like grow over no, the I years? No, I kind of kept it in the same area. Now, the other thing that I do do is, um, did I piss them off? Um, <laughs> the, um, so what I also do like, Paradise Valley is where I first started. So there I will coalesce like with, with Ken Clark. We've got, we've got a good one now, but so that, those I'll coalesce with them. And even then in, in PV, um, it's hard because you know, there, unfortunately, I, I specialize in an area, and did, but it didn't happen overnight, but it's just consistent advertising. But definitely, I've kind of kept trying to keep it in the same area that I did. And the newsletter I quit doing because it just got to be too cumbersome, but I did keep the same geographically. That was an easy question. Thank you. Um, so postcards, and again, here's the other thing, too. If you, if you sell a home, like in a particular subdivision that's gated, you assume everybody in there knew you sold it, but maybe the owner, some of the owners maybe that estate. Mm -hmm. So just send them. I mean, and they'll fit get forwarded from the title company. But those do work, and but you've got to be consistent. I mean, you find on a budget, and and even if you say, well, I didn't have any sales this month, figure it out. I mean, you've got to be consistent. Um, here's just a couple some of the other areas that, that, I, that I do marketing. So uh, I do postcards and magnets. Um, I even do, do a bus stop. So it's kind of crazy. Um, that there's a, a my, my daughter graduated from Xavier and one of her classmates say I'm now selling um, for this one bus stop. She actually called my wife. My wife said no, uh, I'm not gonna do it. My husband would. So, <laughs> so anyway, um, and now and I think I'm gonna try it for for two months. And I picked the biggest biggest area, most traffic area, which is Central Glendale, and it cost me. I do two parts on the on the bus stop in. That one there is about 500 bucks a month. Now, it, it can be kind of expensive. And people go, does that work? And I, I, I don't know if it works, but I get more abuse, more crap from people that will draw mustaches <laughs> or hats and stuff. But they see it. And when your car is stopped, you see it. So it's just one of those things that it, it, it couples your advertising. I wouldn't necessarily say you, you should do that. But I see there's other bus stops that are out there. It just get your name out there. So that's, I'm still doing it every time I, I try to quit. Um, my wife said you can't do it, so uh, that's what you do. Um, the other thing that I, I tried one time, I actually tried a, a PR firm, a uh, public relations firm, because I, I do sell in North Central, um, and the Biltmore, which is very, very close to that area, I thought that, you know, why not, I, 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 can, I can be the expert in the Biltmore, which is only a few miles away. So I actually hired this PR person, um, crazy number, $3,000 a month. and. Really what it became is more work for me because she actually would call me up um, at four o'clock in the morning, actually I'm already up at that time, and say, okay, you need to go live on channel three at five o'clock and talk about this topic. And so a lot of times when she, they'd call me, they th and here's where they think that being on TV at, at, at four or five o'clock in the morning, they, they, they put a value of like $5,000. We're giving you a $5,000 return. Who the hell's watching TV that you know, that time in the morning? 
Um, anyway, so I did it, and I, I sometimes I have to call a friend of mine, wake them up, say, I got to talk about this topic of financing. And it was just like, I haven't changed my whole schedule because I like to work out in the morning. But and it's funny that after I did the TV spot in the morning, nobody would even call me because nobody saw it. You know, and, and so that, that's what she thought she was giving me a return on my investment. Um, and then there'd be other stuff I'd have to do. I just figured after, literally I did it for like seven, eight months, and then I realized that that the reason why I couldn't capture that, I mean, still get maybe a listing here or there, because they've got people, like I've been in North Suns for 25 years, they've had people in the Biltmore area for 25 years, you're not gonna kick their butts. I mean, you may get here or there a little bit, but that's the area they've worked and advertised all that time. So just know that it's not easy penetrating an area that where you have established agents. You, there's still room for everybody in there. But I realized after you know twenty four thousand dollars and three or four TV <laughs> spots that nobody watched, um, huh. it was a waste of time. But it's you, you live and learn that way. Um, one thing I really believe in is sponsoring the local little league teams. Um, whether it be you know volleyball is a big deal now. You got flag football. Get your name in the back of the jerseys. It's so inexpensive. Uh, again, because I coached my kids all those years, it's kind of cool where people will send a um, you know picture. Hey, my kids got your 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 jersey on the back, and it just it goes a long way. My my joke with that is um, my daughter was playing. I was coaching her in uh, club uh, softball. We were playing for the championship game against and my daughter at the time. I think was in fifth grade. We were playing my neighbor who had two girls on the team in a championship game. Of course, my team at the time, I was Realty Executives, was sponsored by Realty Executives, and so was my neighbor's team. She put black tape over all the kids' names so mm. my name wouldn't be saying when we kicked her butt. But anyway, Are you it, me? No, I, but I thought that was funny. To me, I thought that was hilarious, but anyway, <laughs> but it was like, but great sportsmanship was teaching these kids. We don't want Bobby's name on the back of our jersey because they're playing them. But I would tell you that jerseys, are so inexpensive or uh, again being a baseball freak like I am or softball you know having your having a banner on the fence during baseball and softball season there's a lot of people you got the grandparents coming there it's so inexpensive to do that so just think about that uh, deal um, to me here's another thing that's so so important is um, realtor tours now I, I've been doing this again 27 years and I watch people now like I'm part of the North Central tour group, as Monica and, and, and Michael know. So about, we used to get probably about 30, 40 people in our tour, sometimes even more. What happens is people move, people pass, they just pass away, but we weren't getting a lot of younger agents. And I would tell you, especially you guys that are new, go on tours for a bunch of reasons. One is you need to know the inventory. Just reading the listing bullshit, excuse me, the language that we all put in there. <coughs> You need to know the houses. I'll tell you why it's important. One is, if you're going to go on a listing appointment, and say you're going to go head to head with me on a listing appointment, I know all the houses in our area. So if you're going to go on a listing appointment, you've never seen the houses around that have sold or are active or pending. How are you going to be able to convince that seller or you know this neighborhood? <coughs> so to me, bless you, um, it's so, so important. I can't emphasize enough. Uh, you don't have to like all the realtors on the tour, it's fine. Pretend like you do, like I do. <laughs> Just kidding. But, but guys, more important than anything, know the inventory, see the prices. And it's really hard because we all put the same crap in our listings, beautiful, gorgeous, you know, all that stuff in there. But seeing the houses, you see how the layout is because I assure you, me being predominantly a listing agent, when I go on an appointment, the sellers are going to want to know that I've seen all my competitors, all their competitors. And when you've told them that, well, what do you think about that house? Well, I didn't like this, this, and this. You're not going to be able to see that by just reading the art, the, the write-up. You got to go on the tour. And let me tell you something about the the, the competing realtors. So I, when I was a realty executive, I was with them for 17 years. Um, I met a lot of really good agents, and I still have. And even with even with, with, with and I, I came home for about 10 years ago. But I would tell you, when you end up doing deals with people, let's just say you're lucky enough to get one offer, but especially two, if you know. That, one of those two agents, you can't convince your seller to take this deal, but you're gonna say, hey, I know Mike, I know Blunt, I don't know this person here. Mm -hmm. That's basically saying, take Mike. And I'm telling you, it goes a long way because your seller is trusting you. 
Uh, especially in today's market, I see a lot of flippers coming in. Mm -hmm. I just had one recently that they went to the 10th day. They go, we couldn't sell it to somebody else, so it's back. You know, it pissed me off. I should have known that was going to happen. They were flipping it. And I thought, you know, somebody I've worked with before, but the ease of having, knowing who the other agent is, and you don't have to, again, I keep saying this, you don't have to personally like and be your best friend, but you know if you get uh, together with them on a deal, it's going to close. You know if you call them, they're going to answer the phone or their assistant. That is so, so important. Which One thing I also um, kind of skip around, do me a favor, answer your phones. I can't tell you how important it is. Um, and, and these guys know, no matter how many calls I get, I, I answer. And, and it, may not, and it, may not, yeah. it may not be a good call, especially if you're dealing with a seller, but huh. it, maybe, maybe what they want to do is you know, they want to bitch at you a little bit, but if you answer the phone, you kind of diffuse the argument. I know your broker here, probably like our broker at HomeSmart, says that's the number one complaint is agents don't return the phone calls. But you'd be surprised how many listings I get over the course of a year because I answer my phone. Somebody says, well, I called four different people to come see my house. You're the first person that answered the phone. And it just, you know what, you got to do it. And I know, if, uh, you know, your friends are with you and your spouse, kids, whatever. It's, it's nerve-wracking, but this is a job that you got to, I mean, if you don't answer your phone, it's going to cost you. So I, I can't tell you how important it is, and it's just, you know, to me it's the most, it hurts you. And, and, and what's even more frustrating, um, how many guys do showing time? I, I love to do it. How many guys do showing time? Absolutely. I hate it. And, and, and um, <laughs> so people go, why do you hate it? I said, because to me, and I'm not, and you guys, I know when I, when I do my, my class, you guys do come on the 17th. It's funny because I'll have 100 people in there, and 95% of them uh, say that you show and tell. Let me tell you why I hate it. Because, again, I answer my phone. I love calling the agent. Now, again, remind that, remember that I'm probably a listing agent. I want agents to call me, and let's just say you've never, you know, I've never met before. Probably haven't met before. But it's okay. So just pretend we, we haven't met before. So, it's okay. uh, so you're going to call me and say, um, I want to show your house. Tell me, okay, you've never sold a house in North Central before. I'm actually going to help you without pissing you off. Let me tell you some of the, I mean, tell me about your client. I'm going to tell you about the neighborhood. I'm going to give you more information that's not on the listing. And you'd be surprised how that helps you sell that house. And you can tell if the agent doesn't want to listen to you, that's fine. That's, but most of them are like, give me some info. Give me some info that about your house that... Because we all put the same stuff on the listing, but if you've got some inside, maybe why are they moving? Um, they're looking for a long Where are they going to move? Yeah, exactly. Thank you. See what came away. Um, but, but any information you have to give you that advantage, maybe, you know, she shot him, killed him, he died in the corner room. I don't know. Have you guys ever sold, uh, I'm kind of bringing up Have you guys ever sold a, a murder suicide house before? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is bizarre. I've sold three of them. And, and, and it's so freaking weird because, you know, I don't know if you know this or not, but if, if, um, if a seller's tell you, you cannot disclose that there was a murder in there, you can't disclose it. And I always tell the three that I've done, you got to disclose it because they're going to talk to their neighbors. So, but it is really eerie and you go, so that's a case why, why are they selling? Because they're both dead. That's a little bit different. That kind of hurts you a little bit. So that's not funny, but I'm just saying, you know, but just it's just it's just I don't know where I was talking where that came off of but but you got to know um, <laughs> there's certain things you can disclose. Uh, look at this guy here. Do you guys know this dude here? It's a, it's a beautiful day when Bobby leaves. Are you new here? <laughs> beautiful day. Hello, sir. I'm mentally take a picture right now. Actually, I could probably take a real one. If I go for it if you can. Well, I'll say I'll go and say it. Oh, you know what we have for this. Good. <laughs> Good Thank you. See, we all talk we like each other. Even <laughs> so, you know, he, he I actually play golf with Jeremy and Mark. That was fun, especially after Mark had about eight cocktails and uh, hit the beats. Anyway, um, so the, the, the whole thing is, no, the, the, the thing with showing time, I get it that you want to move on to the next deal, but I, as a listing agent, want you to call me. I take showing time off. I do answer the phone. That's a big key because a lot of people won't answer it. But I'm going to give you all the information you can have that will help me sell the house. So tell me some of you guys why you like showing time. I love, love hearing. Go ahead. I like it for the follow up because um, okay. it keeps the agent's information. Um, I know who's been in there, and especially like if it's a home that's under five hundred thousand, and you can get a ton of showings. Okay. 
Um, and you know, sometimes you're in an appointment, so you can't get that phone call when they need to schedule. <laughs> so to me, that's why I like it, but I get what you're saying, yeah. and I think that's a really good point. Thank you. Well, saying. and I will tell you too, you're gonna know they showed your house if you have a lot of box yeah. anyway, that you can follow back up with them. So, but I, I get it. Anybody else that want to tell me that I don't care what you have to say? Well, yes, ma'am. You were late, so I don't care. Is she allowed to ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, you can do it. Well, because okay. it maps everything out. Yeah. It tells you about it. how far, yeah. and then yeah. I send that to my clients and they know exactly where we're going also. Okay. And okay. I do like to use it, but I'll still call the agents and I'll still okay. put it yeah. in there. Do the agents answer the phone when you call them? That's well, no. no. That's no. the problem. Yeah. 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 You guys will from now on. I want more information about, I'm showing your listing. Right. I'm just calling to get more information. Mm -hmm. And I did get that from you on your last class, and it is helpful. Thank you. All right, for sure. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because when you call, like, I'm listing, I'm so appreciative that you guys are calling me. Again, I don't have to like you, but I'm so appreciative you're calling me. Somebody's saying, just like, you're, why are you bothering me? Well, I'm showing your freaking house. Right. And that really is like, Oh my God, if your client only knew the arrogance that you have, mm -hmm. I'm trying to show your house, I've called you four times. But they'll say, don't call me. Yeah, call my but assistant. let me tell you what I do, guys. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what I do, and you can do it to me. If you call an agent and they don't answer the phone right away, I call them again. I call them again until they answer the phone. They, they may get mad at me, but I, if I want to, I mean, I, I don't just make one call to them, and that's why I have no friends, but I, I keep calling them <laughs> until they answer the phone because I need, I need to ask a question. I want to show you, I mean, I'm, not, I'm not calling you with a five minute notice, I'm gonna call you with a two, three hour time frame, but you're the listing agent, and just, anyway, it's just crazy. So, right, we got that? <laughs> Is anybody else about showing time? Yes, you always have a response to every group, thank you. I yes. think showing time makes lazy realtors I, 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 I agree, I agree. Mm -hmm. I do to a certain extent, and I get the, the whole mapping out deal, I, I, I respect that. I just, you know, big thing is, when I'm mapping out, it's all within the, Typically a two or three mile radius, I don't know, that's, that's right. It's a little different if you're spread out. No, I right. get that. Now, I don't have to use GPS on mine because I know, but that to me is just really, really um, a thing about showing time. So I'm kind of running. Um, the other thing, too, that I think is real, real important is do good pictures. Um, it's funny, right? Um, even I, we just listed a really big house that's you know, 11,000 square feet, which is really kind of sick. But I only did like 30 pictures in there. And I know some of these homes I'll see like are 300, 400,000. They got like 82 pictures. Here's a toilet paper in this room. You gotta realize people don't wanna see that many pictures. And, and the reason why you do that is because your photographer makes more money for the more pictures you do. Just do enough to show the main room. You don't have to show every part of the house, but just show the, the key ones. I think that to me, because people are going through all the different, they're not gonna go through all 82 pictures. But get a professional photographer. I mean, good God, you're you're gonna make uh, hundred thousand. You're gonna make three thousand, hopefully, or you know whatever it may be. Spend money on a photographer because let me tell you why good pictures matter. Because not only does it help you sell that house, but you don't know how many other buyers or sellers are going. Oh my God, those are the best pictures. Or even if you do a drone or virtual tour, I like that realtor. I'm gonna hire him for my house. You're not only so you, if you're doing this for long term. You're not doing it just for the one. And I think people don't look at that saying, okay, I really, you know, this is probably the biggest crap house I had, so uh, I'm gonna try to get some pictures that look good. But just know that somebody's always looking at what you do on the internet and may be impressed by your work. And that, to me, I think goes a long way. That's why I said, too, when you go on listing appointments, the more information you have about the surrounding house around you um, is gonna help you get more listings if people are gonna realize that, that you know, Okay. Um, oh my God, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Just for Jeremy? Yeah. Okay. Oh God. Oh. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but you know, the end, really, the, 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 the video has you talk about photographer. So the pictures really do help when you're doing, uh, you know, for listings, and also again when it comes time to getting, you know, other houses and stuff like that. Um, the other thing I, that I, I would tell you <laughs> is do really good flyers. Now, again, we use our title company to do good flyers. I don't do the six pages, here's what's in every room deal, because again, doing this as long as I have, I like one good page. Even if, even believe it or not, even the one that we're selling for almost five million, I've got 11,000, it's one page, front and back. It's just because people that, if you're, you're taking, if people are going out and looking at seven or eight houses, they're not going to look at six pages. Here's the living room, family room, boom, boom. That's great. You did all that. 
you, you maybe you think you're impressing the seller. They just don't want to see that shit. They just, they just want to give your client one picture, one, I mean, one page with maybe three or four pictures on there, but get a professional photographer. Here, this guy, are you for sale? No. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, but, you, but pictures are so, so important. And again, besides the, 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 the flyers, the flyers do, you know, we also put our flyers on the internet so people can download them. But when you, they go in the house and they can grab the flyer, the sellers are so confused, or the buyers are so confused, they've looked at you know, eight or nine homes, they may not remember, but at the end of the day, they'll look at that one the flyer to help them remember, and then maybe it'll help them get down to the, the house they like. But just don't confuse, I, I look at these, so many people put so much work in every single room, and there's six pages, it's like, that's crazy. Besides wasting paper, nobody's gonna look at all that stuff. Yes, sir? Flyers, are the flyers that you're talking about, is that flyers you keep at the open house, or do you mail those, or? What, where, do, where do the flyers end up? The flyers are um, actually for the um, for the houses that we're doing open, or when people come see my houses, yeah. Um, or maybe actually, if we're fortunate enough to sell the house, I may even put have do sold and mail those flyers out if I have excess of them. But the title companies and mortgage companies will help you guys with that. They'll help save you some of the costs in there, and there's no violations for doing that. But I just make make the flyer because again, I, I make sure the flyers are good, the pictures are good knowing that somebody else out there that maybe potential buyer or seller will like them. It kind of goes to with the, you know, how many guys do open houses? You know, and, and obviously for, for new agents um, I, and we do open houses. The open house, now here's my only concern about, um, playing time. My, here's my concern about open houses. If you have a big house, like we have the big one we just listed, I, I won't do that because you don't, there's professional thieves out there, you can't yeah. watch them. And I'm just in security issues too. I, I just, I'm real nervous. I, I do not, and we typically have about 20 houses now, usually have a little more sometimes. But if they're vacant, I don't care. What are they gonna steal? But if you have an occupied house, we had an issue in North Central about five, six years ago where there actually were couples, you know, I don't know, a girlfriend, whatever they were, backpacks, and they're going, one's upstairs, and hey, Bobby, take me around here. And then boom, the other person is just mm -hmm. stealing crap, rifling through the drawers. And I'm just telling you, that's the end. As a realtor, listing agent, you're putting yourself in, first of all, you don't know the safety issues, but if stuff gets stolen, they're gonna look to you. So just be careful, and, and if you're, I, I get it, if it's your own house that you're doing, your own listing, that's one thing, but I'm just leery when you got a big house or if you have a house that's occupied and somebody does play, uh, well, one goes one way and one goes the other way, you just, you know, gotta be careful. But open houses too, I, I would tell you the same thing I said earlier, is be prepared. Uh, knowing that, first of all, I, I, I remember, um, and we still get eight sometimes, go, oh my God, it's five to 12, my golf game got canceled, so I'm just gonna do an open house today. Do you know anything about the house? No, you just you put your signs out. What good are you? No. you know, I mean, you're not doing the, the not, no, I'm good at you, Michael, but, but what good are you? you you're gonna, I mean, you're, you're, you're basically, you do an open, you're, you're a body in the house, you know nothing about the house, you know nothing about the neighbors. So if you really gonna spend two or three hours or three or four hours to do an open house, know the neighborhood, know the house you're doing, especially. Now, I, I, I always tell people, I mean, I, I, I don't think I've, as long as I'm doing real estate, maybe sold 10 homes in, in 25 years off an open house. I just, you know. But what it does do is it gets you more buyers and more sellers. If you do a good enough job on that house and the, and the, eight, and the buyers come in there and they like you and they go, you're well prepared, they may test you. They may go, hey, you know, they may act like, you know, they don't know anything about the house next door. I heard a house sold next door. Yes, sir, there's boom, 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 boom. They're going, wow. I heard this sell so yeah, boom, boom. How about the ones that active? So the more information that you know, you don't know if you're being, again, played by that buyer or seller. They, they maybe don't give a shit about this house here, but they like you maybe to represent them as a buyer or represent them uh, as another sale down the street. So that helps. Yes, sir? Oh, no. Okay. Are you cold? Because you got the hat on, too. I got cold. Okay. Hey, we're in trouble. What's that? Yeah, that's why I just walked in. Oh, man. He's here for you. Oh, he's, he's, he's represented me many times. He knows, yeah. <laughs> how, many, how many people have had to actually resign? Hmm. Right, can I ask you? Yes, sir. Just to clarify, so are you saying that you don't do open houses on your own listings when they're occupied, or, or you don't let outside people do I, I, well, Personally, I don't do open houses anymore, but I, I don't like outside agents. 
be afraid, and I would tell you to be honest with you, it should be from your own company because you check with your broker, but mm -hmm. we don't allow somebody from another agency to do open house because of B&O insurance. Yeah. I just don't like, um, if it's my own listing, and well, it's gonna be your own, you don't you actually you're asking me. If it's, if it's occupied and there's personal stuff in the house, I just don't like doing it. And, and truthfully, a lot of sellers don't want to do open houses. They really don't. But they're <clears throat> bamboozled, hey, this, and look, we, Let's be honest here amongst us. We do the open houses for ourselves. We're hoping to pick up buyers. Do you really think you're gonna sell that house? Come on, I mean, no. But you're hoping to pick up buyers. But I just don't wanna take the chance of somebody, because I've seen too many people get stuff stolen out of houses. We're seeing lock boxes stolen now. Be careful too when you put your lock box on. Sometimes people will put it on the spigot. You can just lift it over the little, little lip there. So put it on there where it's secured properly. Um, if they cut it, there's not much you can do about that, but just make sure you can't just slip it off and, and take it home and boom. So we're seeing that. But I just don't like doing open houses that that have them when it's occupied. I really don't. Um, but but no, but open houses can be a great source of, of new customers. Uh, and there was one agent as we launch now, I mean she probably does four or five homes a year luxury from doing open houses. It is it, it, crazy, but she for her she's great at it. Uh, she knows how to work it, and she gets people, she, but she knows all the data about everything around that area that maybe people that didn't know who she was end up hiring her to do other houses. So I'll do it. Yeah. Any, any questions? Yes, sir. I knew you look like you could raise your hand. So, yeah. just, just some general question. Whenever you oh, my God. Are you taking notes? <laughs> and can you make him any smaller book to write notes? Wow. <laughs> look at that. Did you get any information? Oh, go ahead. So, I'm just having fun. Well, you report just... me to Jeremy. Jeremy knows me, Mark Nicole. Oh. Oh. Go ahead. Well, um, you mentioned all these marketing uh, uh, tactics that you're doing. Uh, yes. what, what's your percentage for referral, like from previous clients last year? What's your percentage referral? You know, because I've been doing this a pretty long time, um, I think previous clients are, I, I, I'm not into ratios and numbers and logistics. I, I probably, I'd say, I get about, if, if you factor I do about 115 homes a year, I probably get 25 or 30 from past clients. The ones that haven't pissed off that really know I get it done. Um, but I'd say probably 25 or 30. And then some of them are from new for some advertising and or maybe, you know, they may have told somebody. Right? Yes, sir. And, and um, there, in your market, like, you know, in the high price range, do you, do you see, uh, like, you know, uh, buyers and sellers asking for, like, discount or, or, or you know, commission? On commissions? Yeah. Like, you know, um, that, that's a pretty touchy deal. and. I would say you do what you got to do, and that, that, let me tell you something. Um, I probably have, you know, I, again, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a realtor, so I'm gonna tell you. I, I, I always would try to start off at three and three. Okay, you can't always do that. Even the big house we have, we're three and three. Sometimes you have to do a little discount. Um, but if it comes down, to, you're always gonna run up against. Well, so and so told me four percent. How many homes have they sold? So um, sometimes you get away with that. But I just, I'm greedy. I don't want to see another competitor sign in my neighborhood. So this is me talking to you guys. If I have to do something, I don't have a partner too, so I can get away with not having to split it. But if, it's, if it comes down to me getting a listing or not getting a listing, I'll cut my fee. I, I don't go into that. I go, look, I'm gonna spend $6,000 a month. A lot of people, great. Some people, I don't give a shit. I, this is, they, they think the commission is the, is the, is the end of it. But, I mean, I do what I gotta do to make a deal work. Because here's what I, and I, I'm not saying you guys need to do that, but I know there's a lot, some realtors, I remember from way back when, would say, I'm not cutting my commission. And guess what, in the day, they never sold a house, somebody else sells it. And then you can say, well, I was right on my price, but I made no, I'm, if I wanna put the effort into advertising, boom, boom, I wanna make whatever I wanna make on that one. But I'm, let me tell you where I make it up. I'm gonna start sending that, like you're asking about being a new agent. I'll send out, hey, I just sold this house in the neighborhood. That typically would get me another sale. So I may have cut my fee on this house to get it done, but I guarantee you that'll help me get another sale. So don't, I mean, I, and here's the cool thing about the companies that we're in. Are, are you guys my home group other than HomeSpot? We're a 100% company other than you pay small fees. That's why I, I'm doing a deal right now, a big house um, over in North Central, and it's over $2 million. And, I end up, I mean, the, the commission was 3% on 
So, and, and I end up giving probably, say by, I probably end up giving half my commission, my seller's paying cash to make the deal work. I still came out pretty good. The listing agent is with uh, Russ Lyon. If they're doing reload, he's having to give 55% of his commission off the top just to, get the deal. just to get the deal because that's how re Russ Lyon with the reload works. Plus, he has a partner, plus, he's got company fees. Mm -hmm. So, the other day, okay, so I gave away 30000 in commission, but I still make a healthy, healthy deal. But so, do what you got to do to make a deal. And I even told my assistant, um, if, I, if I walk away with 5000 I'm not getting shut out in this deal because now. I'm going to put in all over the, my my marketing stuff. I sold a two million dollar house. People don't ask me how much I made in the house. So, but I'm when I'm looking at these reloads and the fees, some of these guys are paying. I mean, I just did a reload that I had to pay because the people were moving into assisted living. Forty percent. That's a lot of money. But you know what? I took the deal because you know if, if I didn't do it, somebody else. And I wasn't even. Here's what was a crappy thing. I, I, I think I wrote it in the North Central News here. And I get but, um, so the deal was, um, it was a $650,000 sale. And the relocation company told my client, because he was moving to Beatitudes, which is a sister living place in North Central, here's the agents, two agents we're going to give you. And my son goes, well, Bobby is the agent in the series. Well, Bobby's not in our, in our, 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 our system. He goes, I don't care. I want, so they, he, I ended up having to fill this freaking paperwork. I swear to God, if you've ever done reload, oh my God, it's like boom, 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 boom. And so you're having to do all this paperwork to get, but I got hired and they had to give up 40% and it's, you know, it's, and I did another reload that um, was actually, a, it was a, here's an interesting story. So this was a, uh, another reload for American Express. I wasn't on their system because I'm not part of their deal. But the agent, the seller said, hire me. So on that one, it was a million two. I, anyway, so I, I, I mostly it was the lot was great. The house was um, kind of old and stuff, and kind of rough. But I valued it. That but I know in North Central land is real important, so I valued it at a million two fifty list a million three. The other competing agent valued it at eight hundred thousand because it was a shitty house and they didn't look the lot. So the relocation company sent me an email. And said to me, uh, "We want you to reevaluate re your number." And I go, "No, this is what I feel it's worth." And I even told the seller, "They go stick to it." And she's like one of the top one or two American Express people in the country. So they end up allowing me to list it, and we sold it for million two fifty. If these other people would have wow. their way, so that's the thing Crazy. I would tell people on the reload. They're getting when you if you ever compete with a reload deal, mm -hmm. no, those exactly. person the, the people are probably. <laughs> Because they're on that system, they're used to paying that company, but they don't know anything about the area. So that's something that I would use if you, if you get hired for a particular area. So, yeah. um, we got a couple more minutes. Any, any questions you guys may have? Anything else? Yes, sir. Um, uh, you got that much stuff in that book there? <laughs> that's right. Do you do any like social media, uh, like on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or do you like uh, collaborate <clears throat> with influencers? Um, so these guys know I, I'm a technology idiot. So I. Actually, my wife uh, is now working, as, as she said, I'm gonna, you, I'm gonna you pay you either way, so you might as well work for you. So my disc jockey is now my social media, but my assistant Kathy is phenomenal. So we do um, uh, all Facebook, we have Instagram, I don't even know my Instagram password. Hey, truthfully guys, I don't know any of my passwords. I, if I tell you if my assistant ever left me, I'd be toast. Um, I just don't know, but, but I would tell you that she puts them on there, and it, what, let me tell you what I like about Facebook. First of all, Facebook is free, but when I sell a house, and let's say Mike is, is the brings in the buyer, not only yeah yeah I'm putting myself on Facebook or I'm putting the picture where she's putting it, so I know how to do it, touting the house sale. But I also acknowledge the other agent involved in there. To me, that's real important because yeah I am the listing agent, but I want to acknowledge Michael for bringing in the buyer. That goes a long way to making agents feel good that. Hey, you're, you're recognizing me and, and on there. So it's to me it's so important. But yes, uh, we, we definitely do all that and we do the business page and we do a personal page in that. And you know, the Instagram, it's funny because when I look at the Instagram stuff, some of the stuff in there is like the same people over and over again. But I guess you guys all look at Instagram? A lot of you? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, you don't? Okay. It, it works. Yeah, it does work. Mm -hmm. 
buddy. And are you on page four now, or? Yeah. I'm having a hard time. No, I mean, <laughs> no, I, I think it's good. You got one? Well, yeah, I, I was just uh, wanted to see, like, you know, like, uh, what uh, what do you spend most of your time on, like, as a, as a realtor? Because there's some other tasks that we do as agents that are not at our pay grade. Right. Mm -hmm. so, like, I tell you, for me, that's a great question. So, you guys already said about um, <laughs> what. To me, it's real important. My routine is I, I after I take the dogs out to go to the bathroom to feed them, I got to work out. I, I do I, I do cardio. I don't run anymore. I have to go to the gym every day to because I don't do it early morning. No one does because when you do a pretty good volume like we do, there's all so much negative shit. It really is, and um, it's you know, it's not all. Yeah, at the very end you get paid, but trust me, it's you know the inspections and everything that goes with it. Working out, releasing, it, it, it's it running, it is, it's phenomenal. It really does help. So I think one, but I just, you know, but then there just, I do appointments and really just, you know, I have all this appointment, but dealing with the pro things I have in escrow with other agents. And it's, hard, it's frustrating when I'm doing with other agents that I'm listing and the agents are not calling you back, even going back to the thing again. That's just real, real, there's no community. So if you're working with an agent that, that picks up the phone and it says, hey, yeah, we're getting ready to, this is where our problem is. I like to call the agent in advance, say, tell me where, where our hiccups are so we can be prepared for it. I just don't like being blindsided. And again, what pisses me off is when the agents don't even have the courtesy to call you and tell you there's a problem. They just send yeah. you a stupid ass lazy email, kind of like, yeah. like mm -hmm. he was saying, pick up the phone and call the other agent. So that's important. But that's to me, is there's always hiccups in every deal you do. The rewards are great, but there's a lot of behind the scenes work. And the sellers, buyers don't want to hear all the problems. They want to know, they want to see the big picture there, but they're going to have some issues. And um, the other issue I run into a lot of times is, is I try to do, like with inspections, I try to do it to a dollar amount. I try to get the other agent, especially for me being a listing agent, I really try to work it out where it's a credit. And I, what I always do, and here's something I would tell you that I think is um, helpful that I have probably at a time, but I don't care, I might get paid, so I don't matter. So, but um, the, the thing is with inspections, what I'll do is like, especially if I'm a listing agent, they'll give you their, their inspection within the 10 days. And I'll send, I'll have, we have a repair company called Phil's Home Maintenance. It's absolutely phenomenal. For 250 bucks, I will have Phil's come out and look at all the stuff that they say was wrong with the house. Some of it's legitimate, some of it's not. But for 250 bucks, and, and, I, and I, I do, I don't even ask my seller to pay, but I pay it. And all of a sudden I've got an estimate from all the different things they're asking for. And I can go back to my client and say, look, boom, boom, I know you don't want to spend this kind of money. Let's offer a credit and try to negotiate. If you have a reasonable agent on the other side, it makes life so much easier. Sometimes, you're off the commission, commission thing, that may be where you have to give a little commission. I mean, it's like you really want to lose a deal. You're this close in escrow. You want to explain to the public why it canceled. So I love it when you know you, you, everybody's got a chance to make ten grand. I'm not giving out a thousand dollars. So you rather yeah, I'll go show them another one. Really? So how much time is that going to take you to get them in the car? I mean, are you that stupid? I don't want to say that. I don't want to. But if it's a thousand dollars, you don't want to give it up. But you know what? You're done. You get the money. You run with it, and now you're marking that house. So don't be afraid to give up a little bit of money if it saves a deal and you can market that again. It's just sometimes we don't want to do that, but you know, it helps. Uh, is there somebody else after me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Screw them, we don't care about them. What is it? Oh, that's oh, that's the one. Um, <laughs> what do you have? Oh, Craig Harlan. Right. Okay, so we're doing it. Do you have any other questions or? I got one more. Okay. I need a lot of people. Thank you for the question in the back there. I Thank appreciate you. your <laughs> A lot of people don't know that you are literally a two person team. And I mean, that's what well, the kind of volume you have. It's, it's, I've always kind of been curious, you know, because I know Kathy works very, very hard back there. But how do you, how do you guys manage that? Uh, I just work a lot of hours. I mean, really, you know, you, you guys know that I'm, I'm emailing at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, I don't have kids at home anymore, so so I guess, you know, you just do what you got to do. I mean, that's really kind of the, I don't, I don't know how we do it either, to be honest with you. Uh, I mean, I don't really have, uh, I'll email Kathy later. No, but, but you know, like, it, it is hard work, and, and I'm lucky that people still call. And I get to, that's why I said I'm, I'm 
on January 1st, I am a wreck that people are not going to call me anymore. So that's why I'm just yeah. always trying to make something up. Guys, thank you very much. I'll let you guys, I'll stay if you have any other questions. I just wanted to know, like, if you take vacations. Yeah, I mean, that's And then how do you work that out, being the only... I, I get up at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. How do I work out? No, 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 no. I mean, how do you work that out? Like, if you're taking a week vacation, you have Lucy, you have you know what? Uh, yeah, I mean, my assistant's been working for 20 years. Literally, she'll cover for me. Even if I'm out of town, I still answer her phone. Yeah. 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 Yeah.